Hey everybody, it's Owen here and welcome to another episode of the Hiker Podcast. This week we have a little treat for you. For the past few weeks, Paul and I have been talking about lining up different adventurers, hikers and filmmakers from all around the world to come onto the show and share their story. And first up is none other than Craig Adams. If you don't know who Craig Adams is by now, you must be living under a rock. Please go and Google his name. Craig is a filmmaker, he's a hiker, he's an adventurer, and he's a minimalist. With nearly 25 million views on YouTube, Craig has become renowned for his unique style of filmmaking in the outdoors by allowing the raw nature of the trail and the cinematic views to the talking. Just a little warning that this episode was recorded on a Zoom call, so it's not quite up to the pristine standard of sound that I'm usually producing. As always, all of the trails that we mentioned in the show are available on the Hiker app. So if you haven't already, make sure you go and download the app for free now in your local app store or head to hiker.app. That's H-I-I-K-E-R dot app. And lastly, if you are enjoying the show, please let us know by giving us a review, sharing with your friends, or you can send us an email at podcast at hiker.co. Craig is a pro and a podcaster himself, and he pardon me with a bit of podcasting wisdom. So rather than going through another intro, we're going to go straight into it. Here it is. Enjoy my interview with Craig Adams. <laughs> hey, what's up? Thanks for the intro. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so tell us, where, where are you right now? I'm in Brooklyn, New York. And I recently you know, moved out of my apartment, but I just find myself coming back to this city time and time again. Yeah, I've been to New York, uh, well, only once, but I, I definitely fell in love with the city and I can see why you would want to keep going back and, and, and do it. And what, what are you getting up to in New York at the moment? Just seeing friends. You know, I actually recently bought a car and I haven't told anyone, so this might be a breaking exclusive. Uh, bought a little Sub, Subaru patchback, and I've got plans to tour around the US and the West to do some hiking because you know, I can't really fly anywhere yeah. but I've got to get the the boring stuff the license and the registration and everything in New York and then I can go back to the west and be free you, you've been out west pretty recently um <laughs> yeah you, uh, the, what's what's it what was it like out there were you there with the forest fires there recently yeah so I went out there and actually bought the car out there Oh. Uh, with the intention to do at least three or four hikes and then do the drive back to the east to get it all set up. But the wildfires did cut my plans short. I did one hike in the Tetons and then had plans to do maybe Wind River or Yellowstone or even Glacier National Park, maybe Colorado. But the fires were really going off at that point and I had to cancel everything. Wow. Yeah, because I'm seeing images of, you know, San Francisco with an orange sky and Yosemite Valley with an orange sky. It's just, it's, it's so uh, heartbreaking um, to see images like that, you know, especially on on trails that I've always wished to to do. I've been in Yosemite myself, but I've always wanted to do the John Muir Trail and and loads of the hikes out, out west. And, you know, it's quite heartbreaking to see that people can't really go out on these trails at the moment because of, because of the fires. Yeah, I think it happens every year. And of course, Colorado itself gets super droughty. And it's almost hard to find running water while you're hiking in general around this time. Mm. But it just feels apocalyptic. Like the entire, so many states. And then the smoke was just so far reaching. Um, I was like, okay, I I need to get out of here. And the fall colors are about to pop off on the East Coast. So that's my next plan to do hikes over here. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get into some of your plans uh, that you're, you're thinking about doing, uh, sorry, your hikes that you're going to be doing soon. Um, but can you talk to us a little bit more about what got you into, I suppose, filmmaking first and foremost? That's, that's where you, you kind of started off. Mm, yeah, I was filmmaking in high school, just doing little fun stuff with friends because it was, uh, you know, fun. Uh, teacher convinced me to, like, actually pursue it as a, a degree so I went to Buffalo State College as a television film arts major and like did the traditional thing and thought I wanted to be like a Spielberg or eventually a director of photography so I've got to go to New York or LA and be a film 
on crew. Uh, but then weddings. Weddings were definitely like the, the track, the gateway drug into YouTube and influencer style life. And um, I, you know, weddings got me into wedding film school, which was a channel that taught people how to do weddings. And then that eventually just got me all the way here in different ways. And at what point then did, did hiking come into the equation? Yeah, I've been hiking all my life, but it wasn't until like a year ago that I started planning my own hikes, which anyone who hikes knows that that's like a big turning point when you're following someone else who's doing all the plans and like is the, the leader of the hike versus you taking all the responsibility. Because there's so much planning that goes into it. And I just didn't do that before. Uh, so I've been hiking for about a year now. And um, my brother definitely inspired me. Uh, to get into that a bit more uh, mm -hmm. just because he was doing the PCT and I kind of wanted to like catch up to his level and one up him in a sense <laughs> and then there was also just the travel aspect I was definitely shooting a lot of travel videos and not really fulfilled I just wasn't liking it I just felt like I was copying what other people shot in different cities like Bangkok or whatever um, and there's just too many people too craziness I went into the mountains and then liked shooting that way better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what, what was your, because uh, like uh, knowing your history on YouTube, the first video that I came across was your, your solo hike in Iceland, the Horn, Hornstrander. Uh, yeah. Was, was that the first one you kind of went out on your own or did you do something a little bit more local? So I would say technically Peru. It was definitely the first hike that I took a leap of faith on. Um, Peru was the first country that I traveled to other than Canada. And that was after I read Four Hour Work Week. Tim Ferriss got me out on a plane in the wild. But eventually I went back to Peru and did Chokakira around Machu Picchu. Um, and I was still like talking. I was still like, you know, trying to do the whole vlog, talk to the camera, be fun, force positivity thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I did Yosemite. But yeah, I think you're right. There was a big change with Hornstrandir in Iceland because my microphone broke and I couldn't talk to the camera. So I was like, what am I going to do? I'm just going to like not talk this whole video. Um, wow. Yeah. So, so it was by chance that you're... Partly. Not entirely. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's there was definitely some inspiration behind the whole walk past the camera on a tripod thing, mm -hmm. because before I was like holding the camera, doing a lot of handheld with hiking, and that's what I've seen everywhere. Like almost every hiking video I saw was shot in that way, or maybe on a Joby on the ground or something. Um, but I'd seen one or two videos of like people on fat bike. Uh, with the fat tires like going through deserts and they set up camera shots and they were just like specks in the distance. And I'm like, wow, that takes so much effort to set up a camera while you're sweaty and hiking, go buy it and then come all the way back and then go back. So I was like, I got to try that myself. The microphone broke and this is the perfect time in Iceland to try it. Wow. Uh, actually that's, that's one thing that, that if Paul was here, he would be asking you about is, you know, uh, how does it feel when you have to walk back when you're doing 30 mile days uh hiking alone and having to walk back every single time and, and only the times that we know as well i'm sure there's like multiple shots that where you go okay i didn't get it there i have to do it again walking back every single time to get your camera is it yeah I, i've definitely gotten better at it okay <laughs> <laughs> at first at first there were a couple shots that i just went way too far it's just knowing what I'm actually going to use in the film. So the moment I turn back to go get the camera, right before is when the clip ends these days. Okay. But I, I remember there were some clips early on that were just really long, far walking, and I almost like didn't barely use that clip in the video. So mm -hmm. way more efficient these days. Good. Uh, and would you plan out where you're going to get your shots do you have an idea where that you're going to get your shots or is it totally off the cuff it is over a decade's worth of thinking about lighting so if you talk to photographers and video people with enough experience hmm. most, most of my friends 
can experience like explain the same feeling like i'm just everywhere i go i'm always thinking about light i'm always thinking about like the depth of subjects in front of me almost like i always have a camera in front of me ready to go so it's just a feeling like i've simplified it it's it's such a you know simplified algorithm in my mind to know when to get the shot and what the shot will look like on a screen like there's no guessing like i know this is a good shot right here the lighting is crap right here i'm just gonna switch up this angle here so it's definitely a muscle memory at this point okay um i suppose it, it, i want to talk about your 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 life as a, as a minimalist uh what, what is that like i suppose a lot, a lot of people will be familiar with the term minimalism but what does that mean practically for for you <laughs> um yeah i've created a filter that everything has to pass through for me to have it and dedicate any time or attention to um and then over time i've narrowed that filter and raised the bar so that it's harder and harder for distractions or unnecessary things to get through it and it's expanded past the physical into uh, what events I go to, what projects I work on, conversations I have or not, relationships, um, just everything. So I've just really sat down and thought about what I should be focusing my time and attention on because mm -hmm. it is valuable. And uh, I stick to that code, I guess. That's what I would call being a minimalist in a sense. Very cool. I, I suppose a lot of people can take parts of that and, and apply it to their own life. I know uh, recently I've been kind of trying to do that myself with, particularly with material things, trying to understand like, do I actually need this? And as I said to you earlier on, before uh, before we start recording, <laughs> I, I bought myself a nice pair of trail runners today and I, I definitely had yeah. a, a, a little word with myself like, do I need these? You're going trail <laughs> running. Yes, you do. Do I need the really good ones? Yes, yeah, how many, how many, how many pairs do you have? Oh, this is like my well, technically they're my second pair of trail runners. Uh, the okay. first pair were a bit too big, and I just kind of considered them as trail shoes, like boots for hiking, oh. uh, like low tops. Uh, but these are Solomon uh, cross country. I don't know what actually what the name of them are. I actually have them here. What here going to be? What are they called? Speed cross. Ooh. Yeah, sounds fancy. Sounds fancy. They look fancy. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty happy with them. But uh, yeah, no, I had I had that little Craig Adams in my head going, "Do you need this on? Do you?" Yeah, really need it's this always funny. Life? A lot of friends and family have expressed to me how just being in proximity to me, they've started to think about things and get rid of things. So I guess I have that effect. Yeah, the, the, the you're gonna have to rename the Marie Kondo to the Craig Adams effect. <laughs> spark joy yeah i need my own <laughs> little tagline um so as i said in the intro there you've done a ton of hiking around the world uh the probably the biggest video as far as i can see here on your youtube channel has been the hornstrander uh hike in iceland um, yeah. but you've accomplished so much you've done hikes and you did the tour de mont blanc uh in the alps um you've hiked the uh, on your YouTube channel, it has the Picos de Europa uh, in Spain. Um, the trail is actually called the El Anilo de Picos, I believe, yeah. um, which yeah. is an absolutely stunning trail. And I, uh, you know, your video has just inspired me to go and do that as soon as we can leave the country, um, mm -hmm. as well as a bunch of hikes across the US and Nepal. And, you know, just looking at your YouTube channel here and just. Uh, cringing with with uh with jealousy um what, what what's been your what's been your hot it's a really tough question but what's been your highlight yeah that's a good question the last video i just uploaded yesterday was a compilation of all of my hikes from the past year uh with all the guides and the commercials edited out and it was four hours of footage so it was just really interesting to go back through those because, you know, I finessed the audio and sweetened the transitions between, but it was great revisiting all of those because I, I do go back and watch them every so often. Um, 
And I also noticed a, a change between the beginning to the end of that video, just in my confidence and how I approached things and shot and edited and did the sound mixing. Uh, it's like I had plans to go to Italy. I had plans to do really go back to Nepal. Like, there's just so much to do. Um, 2020 is thrown a wrench in that. So I'm doing, like you said, a lot of domestic U.S. West based uh, hikes right now. Hmm. Um, the Iceland one was special just because it was so isolated and honestly was a challenge uh, just because I had never really done like a four day hike like that. Um, yeah, I always go back to the Picos Europa because that was the longest I've ever done and it was so dramatic and the food and the people were great. Um, but Nepal, uh, just every single one has its little thing, but having a little white dog follow you for three days straight really is special. <laughs> I want to go back to Nepal because there are little dogs that just follow you on the mountains. It's like a wow. thing. And you know, I really love dogs and I try to get dogs in every video. And this one, it was almost like, they're like, okay, here's your dog. Enjoy your hike. Like every hiker gets a dog. <laughs> Oh, well, and you didn't have to pay extra for that. No, it's just included. <laughs> and the dog was so nice. So here in the U.S., like I'm trying to like I'm my next hike. I'm actually planning on taking my family dog, but she's a little chubby. So we might have to get whip her into shape and get her little booty booties for her feet. Um, but oh, uh, yeah, I, I do want to go back to Nepal just because of the dog, the included dog. Well, maybe that's something that we need to actually add onto the hike. Uh, not just dog friendly trails, dog included <laughs> trails. So yeah. you're, you're guaranteed to have the, the dog on your trail. Um, yes. I'm actually I'm meaning to watch your, your four hour uh, video. Um, uh, I see you've gotten into the ASMR game. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a deep, dark hole to, to go down. Um, Cool. So, like, so there isn't re the Nepal is supposed to, is the highlight, but it's really I'm sure um, it's really hard to pick anything because, as you said, there every single trail has a uniqueness. Like you know, you're looking at your Grand Canyon rim to rim trail versus you know um, the the Tour de Mont Blanc because they're two completely different sides of the planet, two completely uh, different trails. So uh, yeah. they, they both have their own. I think I would go back to do the Tour de Mont Blanc again. And really? I've always gone back and forth and considered like doing guided tours with subscribers. Um, okay. You know, there's a whole li liability and added responsibility. That's a whole business venture by itself to like be a guide. Yeah. Um, but that trail definitely has so much life and people and cities or like towns that you pass through. Mm. So it's a different type of hike but totally doable for anyone to start. Yeah, we, we actually did, and ep the last episode we recorded uh, was with Paul, because uh, he did the Tour de Mont Blanc a couple of years ago, and yeah. definitely is something that's on my list uh, as soon as we can travel again. I, I Like, my list is so long. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> um, See, that's why I want to just live in a car and just, like, travel <laughs> place to place and just, like, every week do a new hike. Like, yeah. Coming, coming back and forth to New York between each hike is just not doable. It's just not smart yeah. carbon-wise, time-wise, and money-wise. And have you any plans uh, on, uh, while you're on the East Coast to, to do any trails there? All right. So my, my plan is, well, next weekend I'm just doing a little no-camera retreat up to the Catskill Mountains, which is like two hours north of New York City. That'll be like a nice little cottage escape. And then the week after that, I'm doing the Adirondacks. I'm going to try to do a 10-peak, four-day uh, hike, which is ambitious. But And people will be like, you've already been to the Adirondacks like three times. Yes, I will always go back there. But it should be peak colors, which will be different than my last hike. Um, and then the week after that, just beach fun with family down in Maryland. And then after that, I'm actually planning on going up to Arcadia, Maine, the Ooh. furthest east north of the u.s to hit the peak fall colors in the second week of october and there are not many mountains i would call them aggressive hill uh and they're also very short so this might be the first video where i just 
kind of mosey around the national park and just string together like their greatest hits because they're all nice. like one one to three miles long so we'll see cool sounds good and you you had plans to do you said earlier on you have plans to do the pct this year yes i did and i canceled that just getting a general sense of more so uncertainty around covid and mm. In hindsight, I probably could have done the PCT and been safe about it, um, but it's fine. It's okay. And it's always there. <laughs> absolutely, and I, I think a lot of people are are in two minds about it. Like there's, there's definitely a lot of dialogue online about you know should the people ha that have done it that did it should they have done it and vice versa. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm definitely under a bigger lens though, just with mm -hmm. the YouTube channel and. When I was doing the Goat Rock Loop up in Washington, I came across a bunch of PCT hikers. So just seeing and interacting with them kind of made me a little jealous, but I think it's okay. Hmm. Uh, have you ever toyed with the idea of doing any of the other through hikes in, in the States? I have no interest in doing the AT. My brother has talked about the Continental Divide mm -hmm. Trail. Um, that might be interesting, but... I don't know. The most I've done is a week and I'm just totally happy. Like I'm, I'm different because I'm shooting videos and like, I'm literally making it my job. So maybe it would be a little more difficult for me to do long hikes and not worry about the camera and editing with an mm -hmm. upload schedule. So I'm, yeah. I'm happy. I would rather do international and shorter stuff for now. Yeah. I, I can, I can see the, the, the logistical nightmare that would be to, to try and do the PCT or any of the through hikes and, and try to, yeah, as you said, stick to a schedule of, I need to get this edited and put up online while you're, you know, hitching for a ride into a town to get to pick up a, a resupply or, or just get a cheeseburger or something like that. You know, it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's a different life out, out there. And not that I know anything about it, but I've spoken to a good enough people and read up enough about it just to know that it's a, it's just a different planet when you're out there you don't even know what time of the time, time of the day or day of the year or day of the week it is um yeah i think a lot of people romanticize the idea of doing it in like one hike um but i i just from what i've seen and talking to people and my brother i think it takes a really special determined person to do that and most of those people were not with a camera. So I think having a camera and that added stress just adds so much weight to doing a four month hike. So it's just different. And yeah. we'll see we'll see in the future. It's that yeah. time. Um any plans to do anything in Europe again? Apart from the tour Tour de Mont Blanc, obviously, but have you plans to go oh. to Ireland or the UK Absolutely. or my plan was to do like a lot of more international stuff this year, but that got postponed. I've got like a list of like over a hundred hikes. Uh, oh, I've sorry, never one hundred hikes. I've never. Oh yeah, over a hundred hikes internationally. Nice. And the more research I do, the more I find. So it's fractal for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm starting to appreciate shorter hikes, and because I didn't think that a day hike would make enough content for a video, but. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> like, yeah. I, don't, I, I catch myself sometimes like trying to anticipate what the algorithm wants or what Google search wants or what I think my audience wants. I just need to remind myself to just have fun. Yeah. Do what I want. Totally. And I think, I think your style certainly lends itself to, to that as well. You know, as you said, it, it's, there's not a, lot, a whole lot of talking in it, if, if any, and it's just you hiking and it's almost therapeutic. It is almost like an ASMR, just watching these videos of, of these beautiful vistas and the nice towns and even you just chomping down on a nice little meal. It's, it is really <laughs> nice to watch. And it, it's, it's, I always say if anybody's looking for anything to watch on a Sunday morning or a Saturday morning while you're having your breakfast or having a cup of coffee just to, to flick on one of your videos it's really nice and kind of calming and also inspirational to like if you're planning to go out on a, on a day hike that day it's nice to, to watch um okay yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna throw a, a question a couple of questions in here for you so Ooh. this is just a, a regular segment and i know we talked about this before but like 
screw it, I'm going to ask you again. Um, food. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, two, there's two prongs to this question. First one is, what is your packed snack? Go-to packed snack for your, for your hikes? Yeah, just like in a Ziploc, I'll have cashews. Mm. I think nuts, tree nuts are just like the densest, easiest. They last long. If they get wet, it's not the end of the world. Cashews are great. Almonds or cashews are probably my like base snack for sure. You don't have a, that's, you don't also, have a, that's also healthy. Are you asking like what's yeah. your like guilty pleasure? That's that's, that's where I was going next. I was like, come on, Craig. Yeah. Come on, get um, the I have honestly I've learned so much about nutrition in the last six months. Um, the show alone on Discovery, I think, like taught me a lot about like fat reserves. I don't know if anyone knows about that, but like it taught me that this guy hunted a moose and then was like trying to survive just off that and he was legit losing weight because a wolverine stole his like jar of fat. Like just meat is I don't know. So I've learned a lot about carbohydrates and all that so i've tried to kind of give up the twix <laughs> okay, okay. I, I used to hike with a twix every hike um but i'm trying to like get away from that a little bit it's about efficiency it's like a minimalist thing when it comes to food like what's the least weight that mm -hmm. i can get good good nutrients from and yeah it's a momentary pleasure to eat a twix but if i pack cashews instead uh, it'll be better I recently went out with uh, two buddies of mine. We did uh, a hike in Ireland called the Sleeve Bloom Way. It's it's a it's a beautiful hike. If you ever get the chance to come over, it's it's in Ireland. There's not a huge amount of trails that are completely off road. Some you have to take in a few miles of road, but this one is pretty much entirely off road. But yeah, I is, I assume that about like old world Europe, like it's been there for yeah. so long. There just must be people and, and roads everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. like some of the the the, the Alpine trails, um, you're pretty much entirely off road the entire way. The the German and Austrian trails, they're 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 kind of like that too. Um, okay. But on on the trail, myself and my friend Mel, uh, we both were like, okay, we're gonna pack our crackers we're going to pack our cheese we're going to pack our uh, you know tomato relish uh like all these things like our food pretty much weighed as much as the rest of our gear in our bag and then we had yeah. a, a, our, our friend connor uh who is a an ultra runner like he's he, he won a 200 mile race before like the guy is an absolute monster uh wow. but he's he's i've done a lot of adventures a lot of backpacking adventures and he was like as light as it possibly can be and ultimately he actually ended up being far more nourished than we were because we were just like piling sugar on just getting sugar rushes and then coming back down or like, it was yep. a great it was a great time but I, I learned a lot of lessons about food that time oh yeah yeah and i've kind of also given up on coffee and tea on the trail which when I tell that to certain people, they think it's blasphemous. I am one of those people. <laughs> yeah. So I think if you don't have something, it just makes it better the next time you do. So when I get off trail, that's like when I can treat myself to those kinds of things. But I really like the idea of just consuming water while hiking. Mm -hmm. It's free and delicious and cold if it's from a stream. Mm -hmm. And the more I drink water, the better I'll hike. So I just try to stay perfectly hydrated so the next one is is food again but this probably more applied to actually okay when you come off trail what's your go-to what's your go-to guilty pleasure i need to make up for all of the calories i've destroyed while hiking oh yeah like a thousand and a half calorie burger like bacon <laughs> cheeseburger is exactly what i'm looking for I'd say most of my hikes have one burger in each of them, but yeah, like a beer, like a lager with cheeseburger. Oh, so good. Nice. Yeah, I think it, some of your some of your videos have actually featured said burger and said beer in it. Uh, so I can, yeah. I can testify to that. And I've been traveling with people in different countries like Thailand, and one of my friends ordered a burger, and I thought he was such an idiot for doing something. Like, you're in Thailand. Why are you ordering a burger? But little do I realize, burgers are different in every country. So it's mm -hmm. it's kind of fascinating to see how 
every country does this like classically American thing. Um, Chile, so different than Switzerland, different than the UK, like everyone does it differently. We all have our, we all have our kicks, all right. <laughs> it's delicious. Um, and another segment that we do uh, that Paul normally would, would cover, but uh, he's, I don't think he'd know what's going on here, but wild camping. So when, when he did the, obviously in, in the US, is it, the, the rules in the US are, are completely different than what they are in, not just in Europe, but even in individual uh, states within Europe and countries within Europe, because Ireland, the rules for wild camping are completely different to the, even to the UK. Um, but when you were in the likes of the Alps, did you wild camp or did you stay in lodges? How did you get by? Oh, for Tour de Mont Blanc in the Alps? Yes. Um, trying to remember. I think I wild camped one night because mm-hmm. I had just gone over a pass in Italy, I believe. And it would have been like way too far to try to find a campground. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I definitely do way more due diligence in figuring out what the actual regulations and stuff are for every trail that I do from now on. Um, that was like one of the fourth hikes I did. So I was still like trying to figure out how to be a good hiker. Yeah. Um, but now, yeah, I'll definitely try to stay in campgrounds if that's the, the rule. Um, but, you know, it, there's an essence of like, if you set up your tent somewhere without being, you know, destroying the area, mm-hmm. uh, if you if you can sleep, go to sleep at sunset and then wake right before sunrise and you don't leave a trace, it's usually okay. Yeah. The, the the downside of what I do is that I have a platform, so um, yeah. Any any mistake that I make, even if it's in context out of respect or ignorance it just gets magnified by idiots or mm-hmm. just people who don't understand uh and and just follow my example so i've got yeah. more of a responsibility so i i understand that totally yeah uh, it, it, the common theme in when we're talking whenever we talk about uh, wild camping here is that exactly what you said get uh, if you are doing this uh be careful of the rules and wherever you're doing it. I know in Ireland, the wild camping is technically not legal, um, yeah. but you can kind of get away with it. Just, you have to follow those, the, the what we call the leave no trace rules. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you have leave no trace in the US. Yeah, we have leave no trace. Yeah, so you, you set up camp uh, just before sunset, sleep, get up and leave uh, just as, as the sun is breaking. So yeah, uh, anyone who's listened to this and you're, planning on doing hikes uh anywhere where you're unsure of the rules just practice the leave, leave no trace guidelines because you want to stay in proper campgrounds but if you need to wild camp just try and follow those rules yeah um, i think proper civility and courtesy respect for the place is mm-hmm. okay but it's just different when you're broadcasting that to a hundred thousand people absolutely um and I think people don't understand like the actual consequences. So more and more I'm starting to see what a trail does look like if there is no respect for littering or if there's just like way too many people camping at one spot, like the actual degradation of the uh, grass or, you know, some campsites like look complete trash just because there's just all dirt patches and people have, gathered sticks and broken trees to build fires um so i'm just learning more and more you know i started off not knowing a single thing and i think as long as i'm growing as an individual and sharing you know those changes and those growth that growth i think that's more important than you know judging someone for the mistakes that they've made in the past absolutely yeah that uh it, it kind of applies across multiple different f- uh, facets within hiking of this kind of yeah. like to- toxic culture of you know degrading <laughs> people for whether it be for well like li- littering littering you know full stop like do not litter <laughs> leave no trace I've had do, people do, tell me you can leave orange peels and banana peels no, on the trail no. and i'm like no don't no. do that no you can't do that no 
No, and like I, I certainly was one of those people. Like I, I consider myself quite a staunch environmentalist, and I even up until you know, uh, just you know, within the last decade, I was like, oh yeah, apple core. I'll throw that over there. Uh, orange, or not orange peel, but like banana skin or something like that. And then someone was like, what yep. are you doing? I was like, oh god, what am I doing? Um, yeah. But yeah, no, you can't, you can't do that. But the the toxic culture I, I'm, uh, would be, you know making someone feel really, really bad about that to the point where they don't want to hike again. And that kind of goes for, even for gear as well, you know, for for having the right types of boots or the right jacket or anything like that. And people being put down for that, that type of things. So at, at the end of the day, we want more people to be out in the outdoors uh, and just experiencing it. So sort of like, you know, just let someone go out in a comfortable pair of shoes. It, it's, it's, it's okay. You don't need to, you don't need to have the, uh, the, the right gear just yet um yeah it's probably better to inspire through example rather than to shame and put down people precisely um speaking of gear and i know we've said it before and i, I suppose we'll, we'll kind of we'll finish up on this because i uh we've been on the call for about 35 minutes now um you, you the, the last time we spoke you said the one piece of gear uh was a particular piece of clothing has that uh, changed? Sun, sun hoodie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, so <laughs> I, I've been wearing the, that sun hoodie for so long that it's starting to get holes and stuff. So I actually just bought a new one. Oh. But as a darker shade, because it's winter time. So I'm about, <laughs> you know, changing the apparel based on the season. So that might be a, a change. Trending on Twitter. <laughs> Craig Adams <laughs> changes color of sun hoodie. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm definitely not like a merch person. I try to keep things as simple as possible when it comes to like the business of YouTube. Yeah. But if I did have my own merch, it would probably be the limited edition Craig Adams sun hoodie <laughs> with a special hat that attaches so the hood doesn't blow off when the wind comes. <laughs> so we'll see, maybe. Awesome. Uh, Craig, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you again and thank you so much for giving me your time and uh, yeah, in, in hopefully inspiring some of our listeners to get out and do some of these trails. Ooh, thank you for having me. It's always okay. a pleasure. Okay, well best of luck with your, your future endeavours and uh, looking forward to seeing more of your, your videos online. Thanks, bud. All right, talk to you soon.